Hey, Silky saved the day. I looked up. Terry was right. Flying cats. A whole bunch of them. Thirteen to be exact, with Silky in the lead. They were flying in formation, coming in low and fast, like fighter jets. Oh, great. As if a, I said, as if a gri giant gorilla wasn't bad enough. Now, we're being attacked by a flock of flying cats. How do you know they're attacking us, said Terry? Maybe they want giant bananas too. Cats don't eat bananas, I said. Everybody knows that. Besides, they look angry, not hungry. Maybe it's a gorilla they're after, said Terry. Look how scared it is. Terry had a point. The gorilla was no longer shaking the tree. It was staring at the cats, its fur bristling. It roared loudly, but if the cats were worried, they didn't show it. They were definitely taking aim at the gorilla. We braced ourselves for 30 flying cats and one giant gorilla collision. But it never came. At the last possible moments, the cats spread out, separated into two groups, flew past the gorilla and scared and scored it up into the sky, where they reformed into a menacing circle high above us. That's when the gorilla started to climb the tree. There are no giant bananas up here, shouted Terry. We already told you that. I don't think it's after the giant bananas anymore. I said, I think it's getting into a better position to fight the cats. The gorilla climbed higher. And higher, and higher, until we were standing at the top of the tree. He beat its enormous chest and roared at the flying cats, which continued to attack and torment it. The cat swooped, and the gorilla swiped. Occasionally, the gorilla would strike the cats and send them crashing to the ground. But they always landed on their feet and rejoined the battle just as quickly as they'd left it. Eventually, the 13 ferocious flying cats became too much for the gorilla. It lost its grip, fell out of the tree, and crashed to the ground with a sickening thud. SICKENING THUD! But the flying cats still weren't finished with the gorilla. Before it could get up, they swooped down, sunk their claws deep into its fur, and lifted it into the air. Then they carried it away. Well, it looked like Silky and her pals saved the day, says Harry. If I hadn't turned her into a flying cat. The treehouse would have been destroyed for sure. I was about to point out that the only reason the treehouse was in danger in the first place was because of him. His sea monkeys and his stupid giant banana, but at that moment the doorbell rang. Oh no, I said. Not more sea monkeys. Terry, how could you? But Terry didn't answer. He was already gone. That was chapter 12. See you tomorrow for chapter 13, which happens to be the last chapter. Bye!